What is a neutron? Hello folks, this is Tom from anti-proton.com. What's a neutron? I'll tell you. A neutron is an electrically neutral particle. It's not positively charged, it's not negatively charged. It's, it does have an electrical charge, but it's zero, so it's effectively like it didn't have a charge. It's a reasonably massive particle, meaning it has a lot of mass to it. I don't mean big, but mass. So it's very heavy, uh, a little bit heavier than a proton, which is kind of a similar particle to it. These both reside inside of the nucleus, or the center, if you like, of an atom, with the electrons, the electron clouds all the way around the outside of it. Um, neutrons are bonded tightly to protons, not by electrical charge or electromagnetic fields, but by something called the strong nuclear force. It's an attraction that exists between them. Believe it or not, the little particles that hold them together are called gluons. Yeah, that name was chosen on purpose. So anyway, a neutron, as I said, is a composite particle. That means it's actually not one particle at all, but it's actually a group of three little particles. These little particles are called quarks. Now, there are 12 types of quarks that exist total, six regular quarks and six anti-quarks. So when you grab three of these and stick them together, the right ones, you get a, a, a neutron. If you put other ones together in different orders, you get other particles, because there's lots and lots and lots of particles, piles, a whole zoo of particles, if you like. So anyway, the neutron is made of um, two down quarks and an up quark. Now, they're not really up or down. These are just arbitrary names that scientists gave them. They're like, uh, what should we call this quark? I'll call this one Bob, and I'll call this one Fred. Well, they named the quarks up, down, top, bottom, charmed, strange. Random names that they gave them just because they were six particles and they didn't have any other names for them. So don't try to ascribe any real meaning to up or down. But anyway, neutrons are made of two down quarks stuck together and an up quark stuck together. So you get these three quarks all together, held together strong by the strong nuclear force, very hard to break apart, very hard. And because they're made of quarks, they're called hadrons. Hadrons are a huge class of particles that are made from quarks stuck together. For example, the proton, which I mentioned a minute ago, is also a hadron. It's made from quarks. But the electron is not, because it's not made from quarks at all. So anyway, quarks are fundamental particles, meaning we don't think we can cut them apart. But you can definitely cut a neutron apart, you'd get quarks. The reality is actually doing that is almost impossible, because the energy required is just ridiculous. But it could be done. If you had something like, I don't know, the Large Hadron Collider, then you could do it. That's one of the reasons they made the crazy thing in the first place. So anyway, um, inside this giant family of hadrons, there's a couple distinct, you know, like, um, clans, if you like, little subsets of it, little groups. One of them is called the baryons. Baryons are, are hadrons that are made up specifically of three quarks, because you can actually be set up with different groupings of quarks, not just three. For example, you have something called mesons. Nobody likes those guys. Mesons are made of two, two uh, quarks stuck together. So anyway, you have these three quarks stuck together, and they're called uh, uh, baryons, remember? the hadron family, and uh, that's a neutron in this case if it happens to be two downs and an up. Uh, they have uh, zero electrical charges, as I said, and they're emitted from fission, from fusion. Whenever you take two atoms and stick them together, besides getting other types of things like gamma rays and x-rays, oftentimes you get an extra neutron that goes flying off. And whenever you take an atom and you break it apart, like when a nuclear weapon goes off or like your local nuclear power plant or whatnot, uh, or even just a chunk of uranium that's sitting there just kind of decaying over time. Whenever an atom splits apart, oftentimes neutrons are released because they're just kind of extra in surplus. And there's a whole bunch of them usually inside of that nucleus, usually whole bunches of them. So uh, uranium atoms usually have over 100. So that's lots and lots and lots and lots of neutrons. Now, when they're stuck in an atom, they last a really long time. I mean, it, just billions and billions of years. But the second you remove a neutron and throw it out by itself, it doesn't live very long. They're kind of like a fish out of water, if you like. They have a half-life, meaning that if you have a clump of them, half of them will decay away within a, 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 about 613 seconds. So about 10 minutes or so. It's not very long. Now let's see a few. During the time that I've been talking to you, my neutron detector here has already detected 40 neutrons going by in just the time 43 now since I've been talking to you. So inside of this container I have a piece of uranium and the piece of uranium is emitting neutrons and the lead is enough to block and shield us from the, um, let's cut it on a Geiger counter, from most of the gamma rays. You see only a little bit of gamma rays. Very, very small amount. But we can definitely detect neutrons. When I put this over you will see the neutrons will start to rise. Give it a second and they will start going up. See? 47, 53. See the neutrons showing up? Suddenly there are a lot more of them. 
So anyway, those are neutrons. And this has been Tom from anti-proton.com. Like, subscribe, ask me questions about neutrons, share with your friends, and enjoy science.